I've been working in Baja, California uh, since uh, in June of 1963. I started working in Baja, California as a geologist. As uh, Cesar Obregón here, Gordon Gassel, and Ned Allison, yo. Uh, and uh, so we took on a project to map Baja, California. You've probably seen this map. This is one of three uh, pages of it. And, and so that's still going on today on this. What I want to do today is to take you down the peninsula 50 years ago, 40 and 50 years ago, and show you what it was like to drive down the peninsula. And also um, to show you what work was like in some of our camps and things. It's a whole different world now. Baja has matured immensely and it, you, don't, you wouldn't know those days. Uh, if you notice here, paved roads, no satellite image, no GPS. Sometimes we didn't even have air photos on this. <laughs> so I'll show you some of the, hopefully, I, this, I'm not used to this, so pardon me. Uh, going down, this is 1967. And this is the main highway north of San Catin. Uh, Socorro sand dunes are here. We're about uh, 20 kilometers north of San Catin. This is the main road, and these are all what we drove on most of the time. That's a truck right there. So this is what we faced. Uh, we felt like we were working in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> I hope these uh, captions that I put on here will help uh, if you have difficulty with English a bit. I'm not sure where this is, but that's what our mapping was. Here's another area we mapped on this. And, you know, nobody for miles and miles on this. One of my dissertation was on the Sierra Juarez. La Rumorosa is right over here, and we're near El Topo, Tapo. Uh, these are two volcanic peaks. And this surface of the Sierra Juarez is flat. We're at about 5,000 feet, maybe uh, 2,000 meters elevation, and it's flat. Uh, it was formed in the Eocene, it's just 45 million years ago or so. And, yep, I'll keep doing this. This is a peak here and another one here of uh, Miocene, 20 million year old basalt. And this is how much the surface has eroded in 30 million years, roughly. And what is the age of the top of this mountain? This is uh, 19, I'm sorry, 19 million uh, or 20 some places. Uh, just throw that. And sometimes this is, you know, a six foot high deep on that. Uh, how did somebody paint this face up here? Lingua, nose and eyes. <laughs> That's natural. I'm trying, I'm, I'm. The, this is the transportation in those days. All the cargo was hauled by these, what we called a ton and a half. And they're big, massive front bumpers, and, and they went day and night. You know, one night, one came down, almost ran into us where we were camped. My wife was on top of the Jeep before I knew it. <laughs> this is in 1972. We flew down. Here's the new road brush. Here are the culverts, and this is the old road. Uh, the um, Catavina is here. Uh, this is the airport at San Luis. And here's the old road. The old road went from rancho to rancho, not direct. It went this way and that way and back. This is in San Quentin, the main highway. And <laughs> of course, but this is it. Here's the road. Here's a bachi here, a pothole here. 
and here's the pothole twin. <laughs> potholes and potholes and potholes. This is a third level pothole. <laughs> and <laughs> muy despacio, very slow. Mucho povo también. The La Pinta de San Quentin, one year in a tormento or storm, uh, there was two feet of water in the dining hall here. Some of these pictures are not of the road. I took this picture from my bed as I was laying there. I woke up, picked up my camera, took the picture. Okay. <laughs> this is the road into El Rosario. A lot of people had said, no, more. And they turned around right at this point. <laughs> that is steeper than it looks. It does not look steep. It is steep on that thing. And there's the road going down. These are the main highways now. Of course, the Chile Secondo in the, on that. Just, I had, it's so nice I had to show it. And also, in the old days, the road went by. This is called El Castillo. There's a falla, or falla, a fault uh, right behind this. This is a false scarp, false scarp. And that's, you know, conglomerate. The old road went up the washes because when it washed out, you just drove around and you know, made a new road. With a new road, you can't do that because pavement goes. So we had to build on the ridges. So there's the old road and the new road. This is my mi esposa key on this thing. Uh, this is a, uh, here's the road here. It's Awahito grade, and uh, my wife is very t wondering why she came along. Because <laughs> the night before we camped at San Quentin, and she had 35 mosquito bites, I had three. <laughs> and she's dusty. So, ah. but she spent, uh, this was a month and a half she spent uh, down there. Mosquitoes know better, Joe. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, she's sweeter than I am. <laughs> And that's just part of the switchback. This is the up road, this is the down road. In El Marmol, in those days, the highway went to, through our El Marmol. You remember it went from the here to there, back and on this. And El Marmol is about here on this thing, uh, on that. We're getting down towards the uh, south or middle of the state of Baja. And this is the Marmol pit, and here's the old road right here. Went right through the pit. And, of course, the graveyard in El Marmol. Look at this, onyx for a grave. And uh, it's like, uh, there's a couple, this one and that one have dates and names on them, nothing else. This is just a cute rock. An elephant seal eating the cereal. This is the main highway in San, in San uh, Catarina, uh, Catavina, the Royal Catavina. You know, think of that. I mean, that's the main road. Uh, and just over here is the gas station. Oh, I have one more. The, this is a storm a little number of years later. That's three foot deep in the middle. You know, we, have, we waited an hour to, for it to go down. And here's the way we got gas in those days. You had a 55 gallon drum, you siphoned it into the five gallon can, and then siphoned it into our tank on this thing. You know, no gas pumps. You know. This is uh, Gordon, Gordon Gastel, a famous, and, and Ned Allison, who map. And this is the gas station. Okay, right now the road goes right over this. This is gone, and the, the new highway is built right over the top of this. Uh, I mean, it's gone, obviously. I think it is. The best water in the peninsula. Real nice well, good, D tasted really good. And about a quarter mile this way up the hill is the outhouse. So you can think about it. We had algae growing in our water uh, 
there uh, after a while. And that's, that's about in here. We fixed our cars on the spot. I broke my spring. Uh, I walk around my car every day to see if anything happened. And this spring, the bolt came out, and I'm fixing it. And you didn't move, or found somebody to fix it, or left it. Uh, this is Laguna Chapala here, and that's where we're going. And look at the pool, though. There were 50 roads choices. None of them any good. <laughs> and if you wonder how dusty was it? This is the blue jeans. <laughs> and this is the green, uh, real green tarp. Okay. He stood on the seat with his hands on the windshield to direct them. And he made a mistake and they had to jack the car up in, in a foot of dust. This is what Chapala in those days, or now. Uh, when the, in those, the, the road didn't go through Chapala anymore, so they picked Chapala up and put it to the road. You know, they just took the whole thing down and put it out by the road. And then nobody stopped. This is the southern part of Chapala, and uh, it's really smooth and things, and we'd go 100 kilometers per hour for three kilometers. And then it was down to 10 uh, you know, miles an hour or so. I traveled faster than most people, and it took me six days to drive the peninsula in 1967. And I drove long days and faster than most people. It's me in 66, my old uh, Jeep, Gordon Gastel and Ned <laughs> Allison. I'm, I don't know his name, but Pendarvis. <laughs> when we drove off the pavement, we didn't have communication with anybody until we drove back on the pavement on this. The only way we got communicated at all was by telegraph. In, in a town, we could send a telegram to somebody. But, you know, we were isolated. No radio, nothing. This is the... Uh, main highway south of Chapala, out here, Sierra Assemblea, and you can see, oops, well, I'll go, here are the cereal trees, cordones, you know, are the main trees here. This is Puta Prieta, and this is our camp in 1966, right here. And we built our own shacks and everything, and, uh, it was dry camp. We had to haul all our water in, everything. I thought I'd take you up. This is the road here to San Barja. And that's the back of San Barja. It's the last Jesuit mission in Baja. And that's the front. El Arco. El Arco now, we're right down here to the state line right there, and we're right in the middle of the peninsula, and this is the main highway. It goes here, and then it comes right down the center of town. And there's the state line at El Arco. Here's the main highway. And that looks good. It, it really was, it's sandy, nice speed, and then you hit a bump. <laughs> That's the, just the, and the um, osprey loved it. There's a nest up here. Mm -hmm. They've cleaned off most of the nests, but this thing usually is full of nests. The, the osprey thinks it's the biggest tree in town. <laughs> These were there, this is Guerrero Negro, and this was there, uh, has been there for, uh, you know, more than 50 years. This is the town here, and this is the main highway coming in on that. These are the salt pans they do, and here they've been harvesting salt here. You know, idea what they look like. And they took the salt out to Isla Cedros, and they shipped it to all over the world. We went in this airport here. We landed here, Pancho Aranda from uh, Sesesi, and I mean, you obviously say, 
and uh, Larry Barnes from LA County Museum and the Almejas Formation here. I took uh, half of my employees and we went down and uh, collected fossils for one winter and it rained and rained and rained. We drove for miles and miles in a dry, dusty uh, area on a peninsula and all of a sudden we saw this. There are 70,000 uh, things in there. We came around the corner and we had barely enough water to drink and we saw this. <laughs> this is 1967 and this is the road into town. There are 70,000 palms in there and to, in order to get rid of all these uh, dead fronds, they burned it. Some of the trees survived, some didn't. This is the church in San Ignacio. Going, we got into San Ignacio at 11 that day and decided, well, San Roseo is only 45 miles away, you know. Uh, we got into San Roseo at seven o'clock that night. <laughs> and this is the main highway here. And Trace Verhini's volcano. And I think this uh, was 1783, I think is when it last erupted. There's an elephant tree. And this is what the volcanic flows look like, my son. And then we came to the grade. This is uh, Trace Verhini's grade. And this is uh, the truck that I showed at the beginning. And it took him half an hour to get to where we are. Yeah. And we had to sit there and wait. Uh, these, uh, this was a one lane road most of the time. There were no two lanes uh, on this. And here it is. It came here, around here, around up here, back there, back there, and back, and on up. And this is uh, Santa Rosalia area. We're now right about in here on the map. And uh, this is the main road here. Does it look like a road? It didn't to us, but that was what it, you know. My wife was on the outside and, get closer. <laughs> she was really, you know, not uh, happy. And of course, San Rosia is a copper mining town. They used locomotives, Baldwin locomotives here. The, on, in 67, these were all sitting on the, where they left them right on the waterfront. Now they've been moved and things. And uh, here they were saddle tank. This is a boiler, and it's it's us on top of the uh, the firebox here. And of course, there I am, and uh, that's that's 50 years ago. <laughs> I was a youngster then, and just the paved road was paved through Santa Rosa in that time. I don't. This is some sort of elevator where they took the slag. And this is the famous swallowtail, gypsum crystal, yeso, uh, and which has been mined out now. Look how thin I am. <laughs> 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 they, uh, a French company ran Santa Rosalia, and this is from the exposition in Paris when the Eiffel Tower was built. They brought it to Santa Rosalia. This thing is made of cast iron and it gets to 120 in the shade in Santa Rosalia. Can you imagine? They held the masses very early in the day. <laughs> and there were fans all over the place. We stopped in the bakery. I don't know if you've ever seen a real old bakery, but they, they put the, the bolillos on the thing and they put them in and just turn the thing and it goes in. And then afterwards, they pull them out. He uses two things and brings them back out. Uh, I think they're a little overdone here. <laughs> You've heard the Gulf of California, the Sea of Cortez, and the Vermilion Sea. And Vermilion, of course, is red. And this is what they saw 
And I understand we had some of that up here, a big one up here recently, which is very unusual. Uh, but these things, uh, they're uh, little, they're actually hermit crabs, or they're in a hermit crab group. And, uh, and they do not taste very good. <laughs> we have tried to eat everything because, <laughs> okay, and uh, but so, and they would be covering the surface of the ocean. And so the whalers, they, there was a story in the log of the Sea of Cortez about seeing these things, thinking they were whale's blood because of the whalers or things. But this is what they were. Oh, that's just uh, El Sombrito and uh, Mulahe were now right in here. And uh, you see the terrace here. Actually, the Battle of Mulahe was fought here at one time during the uh, 1840s. This is the old road. And of course, at this time, the, they have cut the new road here. But this is the old road. In 1967, we drove down through here. You crossed a dam here and it's down along the thing. They had a prison in Mulahe, and the prisoners were allowed out during the day to work, and then they had to come in at night. And nobody ever left because if they did, they sent them to uh, Trace Maria, Maria's Island, where the uh, there was no dates. And one of the big crops here, of course, is dates. And here they are. They put them here, let them dry some, and then they put them on the rack. And uh, they're drying dates here on the mats too. And these are. Uh, going to be carnitas, I mean uh, chicharrones. Uh, this is pig skin. He's butchering a pig right here. So, and this is on the, I mean, I'm, I'm on the highway when I took this picture. So, uh, and just the cove, the old road went right along here and climbed out, and you can see part of it right there. And in 1967, we had to drive in the Gulf on the main highway, and this is low tide. You know, at high tide, these rocks are covered. We had to wait. <laughs> you know, it wasn't too bad sitting there on the beach. <laughs> and sometimes it was on the hill, but look at this. And this is a one track. You know, if somebody's coming the other way, Somebody had to give. <laughs> you, you just, you always listened because you could hear trucks and other people coming on this thing. So this is a southern part of Concepcion Bay and we're right, Concepcion Bay is right here. And this is just Recreson Tombolo. If you're ever down there, it's, it's a must. You need to go at uh, high tide uh, this is a wash. At low tide, it's still got some in there, but you can go over uh, to it. The old road went right along here. It went around the point. And just, just the road uh, in 72. The, um, there's, the mountains are called Sierra Gigantia, and they're about a mythical goddess. Uh, and I think this is the goddess here, the soldiers, you know, named it. This is a fault, though. Look at that. Church in uh, Santa, Ro I mean, in uh, Loreto. The priest won a lottery, so he decided to build, put clock in it. And the church did not like that. I don't know if it's still there or not. I, I haven't seen it lately. And again, a sunrise from my breakfast, or from my bed. Here's a fisherman. And actually, the night before, here's the moon. See, there's the moon there, and the thing. So, it was beautiful along the coast there. This one is, I like. <laughs> we were coming up the road from Loreto to San Javier Mission, and it was as bad as it looks here. And this cowboy, was bringing some cattle down. And the bull here saw us up here, so he ran down ahead and he pushed against the side of the car. 
until we moved over. And then he watched the cows come. And uh, just, that's uh, sunrise at Puerto Escondido. And that's, in uh, those days, the, they had a salt operation in, in uh, Carmen Island. It's no longer there now. But this is the barge they brought it over with. And talk about a rust bucket. Fault at Puerto Escondido. See the fault here and another one here. This is what formed the scarp. The water was three feet deep in the middle here. We couldn't cross. I don't know what possessed him to walk across it. I wasn't going to go across anyway. But this is the main highway. And on the old main highway, this is Bahia San Luis Gonzaga. A lot of people think San, but the, I'm not Bahia. It's Mission San Luis Gonzaga. Most people think that this mission was at San Luis Gonzaga, or, you know, and it's not. And the reason for this mission, one of the reasons, is this, which is the garrison, garrison for the troops. And when the Minota Galleon would make landfall in Magdalena Bay, they would put these troops on the galleon because the English pirates would, you know, the so sailors weren't in any shape to fight. So that's what this was, is a garrison. And the main road right down through the middle of town. This is the cover of, one of my book that you see there. And that's a 50 f or 15 meter, 50 foot boat here, and another one right there. So I'll show you the size of that. Espirito Santo Island. This is east of La Paz, right there. And the Bandolera, uh, Balanda rather. Uh, this has been pushed over, and the one they rebuilt doesn't look anything like this. <laughs> you know, but some Americans pushed it over. We happened to see it before it went over. I heard it was Chilangos. What? I heard it was Chilangos. <laughs> really? Oh, well, it's possible. You know, we can never tell what these people in Mexico City is going to do. <laughs> Anybody here in Mexico City? <laughs> Uh, anyway, this is uh, Cabo San Lucas, and uh, that's, you know the end of Baja. And the interesting thing here is here's a terrace, and I'm sitting on a terrace which is built by the waves. I'm almost a hundred feet above sea level, and this the waves and wind are strong enough today. I mean, in uh, this present time, to push the sand up there. Uh, it, it, there's a, a lot of stories of that. And if you want to walk as far as you can walk, this is as far as you can get on the heap. Well, let's go back north and a little closer. This is the road uh, up to Gonzaga Bay. Uh, it's typical uh, Ocotillo, Cardone, De Tio, and uh, De Tio, uh, Cereal here. And then the Greece uh, Creosote. The road went down Kalamahue Canyon, and this is the main highway going north. I understand today they're building the road up, but it's up on the side of the hill, and it's a very difficult because you can't put a paved road down this canyon because it's a wash. <laughs> That's the reason why it's smooth. The water. <laughs> That's the road into, this is Gonzaga Bay, East of San Luis here. Uh, and this is a road, terrible road, absolutely washboard, you know. This is the best road, the old road. We used to go right over and drive down the old road. Uh, I rarely got flats down there in the years, but um, this is about, oh, uh, 75 or, or a little later. And I got, in that stretch of road, on different trips, I got five flats. And I had not gotten another flat anywhere for years. You know, it was bad. I understand it's paved now. I don't think we can save that one. By the way, I blew, when, coming down south one time, I blew out a tire, and I had a three-inch break in the sidewall of the tire. So I decided, well, I'll try and go to La Paz, which was not a good idea, because we're going there. I was 72. 
and I went to buy a Nana one in Constitucion. And the guy said, well, why don't you fix this one? And they have a, a little boot that they vulcanize a patch on it. It was great in Baja, but he got over 45 miles an hour here <laughs> dead. <laughs> it, uh, it was unbalanced. This is Ojos Negros. This used to be the main road to, uh, from T uh, Ensenada to uh, San Felipe. And another part of it, this is the main road. And of course, when it got wet, you can see what happened here. And you got, oh, this is actually, I threw this in. This is a road from uh, the Laguna Hansen down into Ojos Negros. It's still that way on this thing. But you see, again, another flat erosion surface. This is a road from the uh, going down into Valle Trinidad here. And it's as steep as it looks. It really was steep. This is Picacho del Diablo here, the San Pedro Martir. And coming back up, you know, a lot of people couldn't make it. They had to go out by way of San Felipe. You know, either that or you stayed in Valle Trinidad. Uh, and look, and look at, I mean, does that look potholes and, uh, you know, it was rough. This is San Matias Pass, which is the end of the Agua Blanca Fault Zone. That's the main road. Uh, now, a little bit about our work. <laughs> this is uh, two of my uh, students, and my wife came on this trip, and we're expecting to spend six weeks in Baja and a month uh, in one camp with no water, nothing. In fact, I'll tell you a little more about it in a little bit. But anyway, we used all that stuff. Give you an idea of size. Look at the cereal tree. They, call, they also call this a boom jum tree. There's a, if any of you read Lewis Carroll, The Journey of the Snark, he talks about a mythical creature called a boom jum on this thing. Those things had absolutely no, uh, I, we were, I take a little bit here. Uh, on this trip, uh, we had our water was Baja water, and it wasn't that good tasting. So we usually put a little lemon juice or lime juice in it and a little sugar to uh, you know, sweeten it. And this guy that I was riding with me, uh, he put some gin in it. And I didn't know that. Here you have a hot day, and I'm drinking, you know, uh, all this water. Anyway, I hit one of these trees at about 30 miles an hour, about the size of this one, and it's like a carrot. It was uh, no damage to my Jeep at all, and the tree was destroyed. This is our camp. We spent uh, three weeks and four days in this camp uh, on this thing. Uh, my wife us here and the two students uh, here and this is our stove we had a Coleman but we didn't use it uh, this is our stove here and this area you see is kind of uh, dusty or things every morning there was at least uh, every square foot of this had mouse tracks on it ratones you know and uh, none of them got in a tent or I'm sure we would have left early but uh, and anyway, we drowned, we, we got 67 uh, mice. Uh, on, and when we got 30 of them in two days, or 36 in two days, we left. That was, uh, this is our stove here. We, every day when we went out, we picked up any wood we could find and brought it back uh, on this thing. And here I am, there's nobody but the four of us within 30 kilometers, 20 miles on this thing. And we saw somebody went by us on the first day we were there, and somebody went by three weeks and three days later, we saw somebody. So talk about isolated. Uh, uh, the Consejo let us use a helicopter one year on this. Uh, and this is my uh, suit our friend Bob Dowlin and the pilot on this thing. 
and here we are out uh, north of La Paz. We're actually in this area north of La Paz here on this thing. When I, uh, a little bit later, I was in uh, Mazatlan and one of the Consejo guys was complaining about having to ride a mule three days into his uh, mine in Durango. And I asked him, why didn't he use this? And he said, if I'm up in the air, they'll shoot at me. <laughs> and uh, when he was on the ground, they didn't. Well, Gordon, here's Gordon. We are, this is part of our project. Our Jeep is out here somewhere, three miles away. And we went down that side and came back up. So that shows you how, this is Bahia Tortugas over here. And Tortugas Bay is right there. Oh, we're not too many. Shark camps, uh, we love shark camps. We'd go in there in mid-afternoon, uh, bring some peaches or some fruit and, or something else, and they provide the shark and tortillas and we'd provide them. Fresh shark is really good. <coughs> Here's Don Fife mapping. You can see where we mapped. This is Pico Antonell. He's the only person uh, in, uh, that ever got hurt in Baja and he died. Uh, anyway, I found him three days later. Dave Hicks, uh, mapping again. You can see our air photos here. And when we didn't have roads, we went on mule back. And uh, that was really fun because one day I went to rent a mule and I, I wanted a, a nice gentle mule. And he said, oh, fine. So he went out in the corral, he roped this mule who crow hopped around some. And finally he got a saddle on him and the thing tried to buck him off a couple times and then ran off down the canyon. And uh, when he came back, the mule was like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and see, gentlemen. <laughs> Actually, uh, once we went through that every day, he was fine. I'll give you an idea of size uh, of things here. Anyway, he's seven feet tall. So that give you an idea of this. Those two guys were mobile, I took them down. And one day, uh, our car wouldn't run. And we had not seen anything for uh, about uh, six hours. We were, you know, out in the Vizcaino uh, desert and uh, seen anything for six hours. So I told them where to camp and everything, they had sleeping bags. I said, I'll be back in a couple of days <laughs> if I'm lucky. <laughs> and can you imagine that? I mean, uh, here you've never been out. It snows in Baja in the Sierra Juarez. Temperature's probably about 28 degrees here. And the same guy here, this is where. Now, this one is one, of, I count one of my nine lives that you use up because we have two flat tires here. Uh, it's 128 in the shade. We hung, hung a thermometer, it was 128 degrees. We got the flat about 11 o'clock in the morning, rigged the shade and like that. All our water is in, in tanks in the, built into the car, very few little, you know, and we're 30 miles from the highway, okay? So you think, figure that one out. I mean, luckily we fixed the tires. Anyway. One, uh, I, I had a rule with my employees, you never drive on the beach. <laughs> so he sends me a telegram, Jeep totally disabled, need new vehicle. My only consolation, he had to walk 30 miles to town. <laughs> you ever wonder what the little circular holes are in the, in the shells? This is a, a hexaplex and he's eating the clamp. He's ground, and I mean, we could pick him up and turn him. He was, he was solid, you know. On Isla Catalana, Catalan, I thought it was Isla Catalan, but Jorge said it was that. Uh, here's the, the feral cactus here. Look how tall, big that is. I'm six foot, you know, and so it's almost 10 feet. On, and there's rattles and rattlesnakes out there. This one is close to home, the Salman, uh, Salmando, uh, Saldamando. Uh, anyway, the reason why it's down there is they ran a battleship tender 
offshore on Cinco de Mayo, you know, wrong thing. And uh, I looked at this and I think, well, we done one better. Uh, the U.S. Navy ran seven destroyers ashore, one. <laughs> And uh, one right after the other, right onto the rocks at, at Point Coelho. And we're getting close to the end. Uh, this is an arosite where they take the gold ore and they put it in here and then they pull the heavy stone over it, grind it, and then they pan it for the gold. And there's a gold mining area up in Sierra Juarez, uh, this Campo Nacional. It's a small hill, gravel, gravel hill from an Eocene river uh, on this, and they mined this. And here are the um, gravels that they mined. They, uh, back then, wages in town were 40 pesos a day. Uh, in camp, there were about 30, and these guys worked for uh, anywhere from 15 to 20. Yaki Indians, mostly. Uh, very close to home. A lot of people hadn't seen this. This is a 1972 picture of uh, Punta San Miguel, north of Sasapuedes here. The road, the highway was built in 63, and the slide didn't happen until 76. Uh, this is the, where they had problems when they built the highway right here. But now, the, the slide goes about like that. And I'm tired. <laughs> so that, that's the end. I don't know who took this picture of me, but I thought <laughs> <laughs> Well, it was hot and, you know, we were hot and dusty and tired. You know, I mean, it's just the way it is. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, and to show a little bit about what the road was like and what our working was like. On it, and there's still parts of Baja that are just like this that haven't changed. Okay. Thank you.